Good morning, Rab Boy Sai. Ah, live from South Africa with some of the baboons in the background. Last, last day here. Daf Mem Aleph of Ksubis. How's everybody doing? Live from South Africa, the final day. We're on the way to the airport with a few minutes to spare. We got a hop around another Daf Gemara. In Gilly Levy's house, not only did he do a wonderful job in the safari, but he's letting me use his dining room. Bezer Hashem, it should be okay. Real quickly, I guess I had a confusion and a big busha by confusing the two words, humiliation and humility. Obviously, I don't know what humility is. So to me, the only word that exists is Humiliation. That didn't make any sense. Okay, I kept say, saying humility instead of humiliation. That goof is a busha. It should be a kapara for all of Klai Yisrael. Oh, man, can you wrote that? I got a number of emails. People are very concerned that I didn't know the difference. I know the difference, just I don't have somebody in cheer telling me, hey, you made a mistake. Um, I love this email because it's a wife who's very, very proud of her husband. Benny Maslin, Maslin is... It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Benny. It says as follows. Wondered if Rebelli could give a birthday shout out to my husband, Benny Maslin, who has transformed his life. You hear this? Transformed his life with a daf. Unbelievable. I got probably 30 emails today. I chose only this one to read out loud because it means a lot. That a wife is proud. It changes the whole mishpacha. It changes the whole dynamics. I'm so grateful to Rebelli for getting him back into his learning. It really is so beautiful to see. Many thanks from family. Maslin, Manchester, Mazel Tov. Thanks for the email. Straight into the sponsors because I do have to make a flight back to Arjus Rol. Be'ezer Hashem, tomorrow's shir will be live from MDY. If we make it there, Be'ezer Hashem, probably in the afternoon sometime. The parents of Chodesh for the Kailal is L'schus. All the new people that joined... The second parents of Koilo of the month, Abi Rachel Kamiansky, in memory of Rachel's mother, Reza Gittel, Bas Esther, Rita Bishbi Melitza, Yeshara, on behalf of us and our children. The Mesech is sponsored, the Nishmas Har Moshe, Ben Baruch Yosef, and the Nishmas Shalom Nata, Ben Allah Moshe, and for that slow, Bechol Yonim, for my children. The second sponsor of the Mesech, the Jeff Razdan, Schos, my son, Yusuf Simcha Chaim, Ben Sorachano, Refur Shlema. The parents of Chaydish, by the Lack and Lubbock families, Lake New Jersey, because Toyra is the best Sgula. Parents of Chaydish number two, Shraki Chavitz, Haral 149, as is close for my family, myself, and Sadiqim Maralat Sala. Parents of Chaydish number three, Lili Nishmas, Moshe Ben Zechariah. Maybe it is, sorry. Let's do Zechariah Ben Moshe. I got an email today, Zechariah Ben Moshe. Parents of Chaydish number four, and just the way Hebrew works, everything is backwards. Benji and Esti, Israel, in memory of our Zaydi, Moshe Menorah. And three cousins, Sarah, Klein, Ricky, Rachel, Menorah, on the 12th yard side, and Nishom should all have an aliyah. Parents of Chaydish number five, Dr. Avram Epstein. In memory of my precious Southern Belle, wife, mother, and grandmother, Rita Gay Epstein. Parents of Chaydish number six, Michael Bemela, Mati Pearl, and Aaron Hirsch, to be Zorich to make to Uman of Shona this year. Parents of Shavua. For Shidduch for Talia, Esther, Bas, Sivio, Amen. Parents of Yom, Yirmi Wise, Lili Nishmas, the first years of his dear nephew that tragically died in a plane crash last year in Ukraine. Wow, these words are all mixed up. I hope I get this okay. Habach Yisrael Tzvi, Ola Shalom, Ben Yibbal Chaim, Reb Moshe. I think that's what it says. He's a very big Baal Chesed, his Shama should have an Ali and his family in a Chama. Amen. By Neil Leibowitz, for a full of comfort of my sister, Sura Basrifko Krasil. Moshe Hirsch, Hatzlach and Parnasa. Ar Meizlik. Lid Nishama, Nishmas, Hershey Wise on his first yard site. Oh, that's somebody else? Hershey and Yirmi. Let's see the name. Shol Tzvi, Ben Yibbal Chaim. Wow, oh, I said that I said it the first time wrong for sure. This is backwards. Some one of them is backwards. Again, because Baruch knows who it is, but because the Hebrew and the English don't, when Yosef puts it on my screen, the words get mixed up. Israel Tzvi Ben Yibad Lachai Moishu Dvari Malka Raizel. I think that's better than the first one. Who tragically was killed in the plane crash in Ukraine at such a young age? 
never got married. May his smile of chesed live forever and be an example for everyone. Wow, wow. Okay. Rabbi Sai, let's jump into it. Today is Daf Mem Aleph, and we're holding on the top of Mem Aleph by brand new Mishnah. I have a beautiful simon for today's Daf. Mem Aleph is Moide Ani. Not only we say Moide Ani, but the whole Mishnah and the Sugi is talking about a person who admits. I admit, not me, but that guy admits that he's Ma'anis and he did something wrong. Whether or not he has to pay, does his admission absolve him of his chiyuv? Says the Heilig Mishnah. So again, Daf Moida'ani. Ha'imer Betisi is Bita Shoplaini. He comes forward and he admits to his crime, says the Mishnah, Mishalim Boshes of Gamma Piatzmoi, the Ain Mishalim Knas, he does not have to pay the 50 Knas, and even if he was sued, in other words, he didn't come forward by himself. If there were two Aidim, that's a different story. But if the father of the girl, let's say, says, Hey, you did such and such thing to my daughter, and he says, Yeah, you're right, I did, Potter from the 50 has to pay. The Boishas of Gam. By the way, yesterday, Mamish Asiyate the Shmaya, for me at least, I was really hoping that the Elam will see some live animals on a safari. And sure enough, a rhinoceros came by, and Navi Kamiansky, who went to Kenya last year, didn't see a single rhinoceros. In some places, very, very difficult to see them. They're becoming more and more extinct because of their horns and the poachers. So we had that schus. And today, while I was about to take off my tefillin, a bunch of baboons came through, and uh, that's maybe Bezer Shendal be the good morning Rabbi Sai in the beginning of the video, just to explain what happened over there. And then later on, when I was preparing Shir, a giraffe came by and drank. And I've never seen it live how they, they have to spread their, you know, they, they have to come from all the way up there and drink. So I got a Gishmaka picture of that. I will show you that as well, Bezer Hashem. Akopanem said that we have to leave, but it's beautiful to be back in our show, Bezer Hashem, with all the equipment and, and the live shiurim. So looking forward to that as well. Ha'imer Gonafti. Now in Gneva, when a person steals something, there's two things. He has to pay the principal, the carrot, and he has to pay kefal. He has to pay a fine. Sometimes it's above a He has to pay if he shechted it or sold it. Misham zakerim al piatzmoi. He does have to pay the principal, even if he admitted. But if he admitted, he absolves himself of that knas. Hey, Mishar is plainy. What if he admits that my axe killed somebody else? Or my axe killed another axe. He has to pay for the actual value. Hey, Mishar is plainy. But when it comes to killing a slave, that's already considered a knas. That's a 30 shekel, one one fine, one amount for every type of slave. In Mela, it's considered in category of fine. Exactly. This is the rule called a Mishalim Yasal Mashe Hizik. If you have to pay more, the Gemara is going to be die more, less, equal. But the Mishnah says if you have to pay more, then the actual damage, and Mishama Piatzmi, that's already in the category of a knas. Says the Gemara of listening on Asti. Why does it talk about if somebody says, I was mefata, I, I hope I didn't say oinus when I read the first words. I was mefata, I seduced this woman. Why does it talk about oinus? Loi me koma. Loi me nasty. That's posh that if he admits by oinus, the like a law, because she wasn't involved, she didn't agree to it, so it doesn't ruin her reputation. The Mishal and Boishas, in that case, he'll pay Boishas Gam. But what if he says, I seduced this woman? In other words, she had a part in it, she was agreeable to it, so now it ruins her reputation. Perhaps he shouldn't pay, because by him paying, you're kind of admitting that what he's saying is true. And what he's saying is true has an effect on another person. That... We believe him. 
You has to pay. If a guy comes forward and says, I was mafata a woman, he has to pay. She gets the fifth. Says the Gemara, Mastisa loy kaitano, our mission is not like this Tana. This time Rabbi Shimon ben Yehudai, Mary Shum Rabbi Shimon, he says in the name of Rabbi Shimon Baychoi, I've Boishas become Eno Mishalma Piatzmoi when it comes to Boishas, let's say right, not humility, humiliation and depreciation. Even those two, he doesn't pay if he comes forward and admits. Why? He has no right, just like the Sephardah that we just said, he has no right to damage another person by him saying that he was, he seduced another woman and she agreed to it, that's damaging it. Oh, and what about in a case where she says, I don't care about my reputation, say whatever you want to say about me, give me the 50. Says but what if her father doesn't want? That's also a problem. Says What if they're both in agreement that he should pay the fine? They want they're they're accepting it. Maybe the mother, maybe the brothers will be embarrassed. You can't do that to them. Wow. The, the some far distant relative that'll hurt him. He'll be embarrassed by this information that his second cousin once removed was dam- was was seduced and agreed to be seduced. So he can't accept the knas. Tysus points out, what if she's the daughter of a ger? There are no, there's no family. In that case, yeah. She could do it to herself. She could receive the knas. Akupar, we see from here a tremendous thing. That when somebody does something, let's say uh, somebody's Mechal Shabbos, says, what does that have to do with me? It has to do not only with you, it has to do with every single family relative that, that lives in, in Argentina, all over the world, you are damaging them in a way. So we have to think about that. Says the Gemara, we learned in the Mishnah, Ha'aymer, Gonafti, Misham Zakar. So there's a good reason why Masech Subas is called Shas Katan. We're going to go into sugyas here from Baba Metzia, Shavuos, Baba Kama, familiar sugyas, Mamish, full sugyas that we learned word for word over there. It's a beautiful sugya. Ha'ibar Ganafti Misham Saker. We're talk, going to talk about Karen, Regel, Shen, all these things. Itmar, Palginizka. When you pay half damages, we have to understand what exactly are you doing? Are you paying a fine? In truth, you shouldn't be paying anything. You should be paying, I don't know if you could say it if it's grammatically correct. You shouldn't be paying, you should be paying zero. You don't pay zero. Okay, you shouldn't be paying anything. Or perhaps you should be paying 100%, but the Torah took it down to 50. Or you shouldn't be paying anything and the Torah put it up to 50. If that's the case, that's a kanas. If it's 100 to 50, that means that it's restitution. That's what you had to pay. Says the Gemara, Itmar. Pal Ganiska, when a person, let's say, when you have an ox that damages another ox, another person, property, and it wasn't worn three times, so it's a tam. So you only pay 50%. What exactly are you paying? You're paying for damages. That's on you. You only pay 50%. The Torah is punishing you. Since you didn't watch your shor, you really don't have to pay anything, but we're going to pay, make you pay 50%. A shor, an axe, is a wild animal. It's going to damage. In fact, today, got a whole lesson about it on the safari. I saw the cousin of an axe, the buffalo, which is one of the big five. And they are the most unpredictable animal in the entire safari. In other words, most animals give like a mock charge, like a lion, if he wants to warn you, he'll pretend he's gonna go and then he stops and lets you run away. And then only afterwards, if you don't, he'll charge you. A bull, uh, a, a buffalo is different, he'll just charge you. In other words, the highest rise. A shar is like that also, perhaps. MMA law, it has a chazaka that you can't watch him. So since you didn't watch him, 
You should really pay for everything. Rachmanu the chayes alavei, but the Torah Rachmanu sent you and said the kadi lo yai Torah. Listen, he wasn't warned three times. And Meila will get let you get away with fifty percent. Rabbi Nuh the Rebbe Shmuel, my palgin is knas and no fakir. The the entire thing is a knas. It's a it's a fine. Kosovis tam shvarim bechaz kashim akarim. Look, a nice little bull. He's a good guy. He's not going to damage anybody. He has a chazaka that he's. You could keep him under wraps. And really, in fact, he shouldn't pay anything. The Torah said, let's levy a fine here so that people start watching their wild bulls. Simon, Hizik, Mo, Behemis, Klau. Now, Hanizik, Bahamazik, Bitashlumim. Okay, so every once in a while we get these riddles. Like just words that we have to figure out what they mean. Hanizuk, the one that was damaged, Vahamazik, and the one that damages, Bitashlumim, they both have to pay. What's going on? Bishnam the Manda Omar Palganiska Mamoina. So if you say, now we're trying to prove which way do we go? Is 50% payment, is that a penalty? Or it's a is from the Torah? Okay, if you hold like the man of Omar, that in fact he deserves, the one that was damaged deserves 100%. And the fact that he's only getting 50%, so he's participating in the payment. He lost 50%. So it makes a lot of sense. If you say that the 50% he got, he didn't deserve, he wasn't entitled to it at all. But he got 50% because we're being nice to him. So, so these, these words, the three words, Nizuk, Hanizuk, Vahamazik, Vitashlumim, don't flow so well. The one that was Nizuk, the, the one that was damaged, he's not Vitashlumim, he's not paying anything. Adarabo, Pungvaker. He got 50%, which he didn't deserve. He's not participating here. He took what he didn't, he didn't he really didn't deserve. Says Gemara, Okay, what's going on here is as follows. Let's say a guy's ox is worth 100. Now that another ox killed it, so now it's worth 50. Okay. So the difference between him being alive and how much he's worth today, that's how much the damager has to pay, if he has to pay the full amount. Now, but it takes time until you go to court, until this, until that, until he, he was killed on a Shabbos, he couldn't do anything. So now a day went by, 24 hours, now it starts smelling, it starts spoiling the meat. Now instead of the meat being worth 50, it's worth 25. Who suffers the 25 damage? The owner of the ox. Ah, so let me just show you this. Um, I don't know if Yosef is going to cut this and put this back, but chart number one goes all the way in the Mishnah that a person doesn't pay knas. Al piatzmoi, whether knas potter says in the pasuk, "Asher yarshiu nelikim." When the bezdin is, when bezdin says that you're chayiv, then you shalim shnayim lereu. Only then do you pay the kefal, the shnayim. That's the pasuk. Now, um, why do I have this picture here? Here's a picture of a shar. It's a true picture. It's a real picture of a shar goring a person. It's during the in Spain they do the running with the bulls. Shemi rachem. So over here you have what a shar can do. There's nothing. So the pchas nevela is what we're saying that the nizuk he, he participates in the loss. Now instead of him getting 50, now he only gets 25, so that's his participation here. Says the Gemara, but what do I need those three words, Hanizik Vahamazik? With Tashlum to tell us this halacha, I know that from somewhere else. It says, I already learned it. Tashlum Inezek, Melam, Shabalim, Taplim, Binevelo. Says the Gemara, Choda Betam, Vechoda Bemuad. One. Brysa is going to tell us the halacha when it comes to a tam, an animal that wasn't worn three times. 
Another one is for an animal that was worn three times. Why should I pay? Why should the damager pay? He wasn't worn, and therefore they were make all with him. So he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to take care of the 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 the, the body of this uh, whatever the word is the 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 dead shark. But uh, an animal that was already worn three times. Maybe the owner should take care. The, the, the damager, he should take care of the dead ox. The muad, he has to pay. He has to pay for the entire ox. So if he's paying so much, maybe the owner of the ox who lost his ox, he should take care of the dead ox. But a time that only pays 50%, Maybe so. Ta- tack on another thing. He pays fifty percent, but he also has to take care of the dead ox. Tzricha. In both cases, the owner of the ox that, that the ox died, he suffers all the consequences. Tashma. Again, what's the question? When you have a tam who pays fifty percent of all damages, not one hundred percent, is he paying fifty percent because he really shouldn't be paying anything? And the tyra levied against the owner a fifty percent penalty. Or he should be paying 100%, and the Torah had Rachmanas on him and said, You only have to pay 50. And eventually we're going to get to our Mishnah and understand why this whole sugi is here. So here you see the Chiyigayf Shar in chart number four. The Chiyigayf Shar is a Shar of a Mesh. The Chiyigayf Shar is a Shar of a Mesh. The Chiyigayf So you take kaspoi, the Gemara learns from the word kaspoi from it. Shatam shalom chatzin nezek megufoi. The, from the, the, the animal that caused the damage, that's where you take the funds for to pay the 50%. Umuad, however, if the animal that damaged is, was worn three times. He's a muad. Mishalim nezik shalim min aliyah has to pay from the best of the best. If he has real estate, he pays hundred percent of the damages. Now the gemara is medayik v'leikotani, but it doesn't say shatam enim mishalim apiatzmoi muad mishalim apiatzmoi. If you're telling me that the fifty percent that the tam pays is only a knas, so just say another nafkimina. Here's a case that the tam doesn't pay based on his own admission. But a muad does pay with his own admission. It's a great nafkimina. If you're a tam, you pay on your own, you don't pay your own admission because it's a kenas. You see from here that it's not a kenas. You're right, it should have been there as one of the differences between a tam and a muad. But sometimes the tana doesn't say all the differences. But that's only if the tana leaves out a number of things. The tana never leaves out one rule. My shear, the high shear, what other rules did he leave out? Perhaps he left out shear. Chatzi koifer. The idea of paying when a tam kills a person, he pays. This idea of koifer, you have to pay koifer. But a tam pays half of the koifer. Now, let's see the pasuk here for a second. Oh. ish. The fact that the Tam doesn't have to pay anything, Balashar, Naki. So, this again, the Shar Hamud who kills a person pays Kaifer, the Tam doesn't even pay half. Chatzik koifer means he doesn't even pay half. Says the Gemara, Mishum Chatzik koifer loves Yuru. That no, I disagree with you. You want to tell me that the the Chatzik, what the Tam pays fifty percent is a knas, and the reason why it's not in the Mishnah is because it was left out, and the other things were left out. What was left out? Chatzik Chatzik koifer. No, that wasn't left out. That's not considered leaving out. We're turning to Daf Mem Aleph Moida Ani Omid Beis. Mani, perhaps, perhaps, I don't know for a fact, but I can't force it. Perhaps, so Mani, Rabbi Yisya Glilihi, Do Omar, Tam Mishal, Chatzik Koyfer. Rabbi Yisya Glilihi is of the opinion that a Tam does pay 50%. And Mimela, you can't, you don't have this shear, and therefore, you would have a problem with this Manda Omar that says that 
chazi nezek is a knas. We just turned to the Mem Alvam Bay, sponsored by Moshe Horn, in honor of Zach the Rock, Rocklin, and Lenny Lerner CPA, and Yanko Cohen, the official MDY MSP. I don't know if I should say it today, but we'll give him a freebie because he's a great guy. Huri Newman, in honor of Rebelli, the real greatest Jewish basketball player ever lived. Yishkoya. Toshma. Now, finally, we get to our mission. Again, the question is when a Tam or anybody that pays a half of damage, is it because it's a penalty or is it because it's a full, he's paying restitution, he's paying mummy, just we said he doesn't have to pay the full amount, he pays 50%. It says in our Mishnah, Hey, Mishnah is Pliny, Oi, Shoyish Pliny. A guy comes forward and he admits that my ox killed a human being or another ox. He has to pay. Isn't this also going on? Our case of a tam. And that's half a nezek, and he has to pay. Now, if it was a knas, he wouldn't have to pay. So you see from here, it's not a knas, it's a restitution. It's only going on more. But the Gemara knew that the Gemara could answer that. No, it's talking about a mood, not a tam. So the Gemara continues. So what are you telling me? That it's a tam. It doesn't pay at all. If my axe killed another slave, he doesn't pay. Why do you have to jump to another case of a slave? Just say one case. My axe killed a human being, another yid. Depends. If he's a muad. This is the Allah. If he's a tam, this is the Allah. Why are you jumping to another case? Nifla, you mean this is the Allah? He doesn't pay at all. So it's like, I don't know. Because our Mishnah could be muad, Kamari. Our entire Mishnah is talking about a muad. Toshma, Zakla. By the way, <laughs> if this is going above your head, because it's Baba Kama, you're getting all nervous, Chati, the, the muad, tam, nezek, don't worry about it. Look down. We're heading to New Perik tomorrow. Says the Gemara, Tashma, Zakla. Kolam Shalom Yesra. It says in our Mishnah. This is the rule. Kolam Shalom Yesra Mashizi. Enim Shalom Apiatzma. If he has to pay more than the damages, then he doesn't pay on his own admission because then it goes to chart number one. If the Bezdin is Mechaev you, then you pay the Kepa. But if you are your own admission, you don't pay a Knas. But if it's less than what he damaged, like a Tam, he damaged the axe that's worth 100, and the Tam only pays 50, that he should pay. That's a Raya that what? That Chatsi Nezek, this that you pay 50%, is restitution and not a fine, because if it was a fine, you wouldn't pay. Don't be medaiking the words, oh, yes, sir, but if it's less, so just say, you have to say, if it's exactly what he was mazik, but, but at the end of the day, what if it's less? You're telling me that he won't have to pay Anything. So if so, listen to that cloud, call Shayna Mishalam Kemosh is again Mishalam Piatsma. So the rule should be if you are, you're not paying what you were mazik, then you don't pay a Piatsma. The mashma, pachis of mashma yasa. It's mashma less and more. So we have a, a shaila in the wording of the Mishnah says the Gemara to you if that's a bomb kasha. Now even though it's a bomb kasha, the Gemara continues and says, Vilchasa, nevertheless, Wow, you have a great kasha on the wording, but I'm telling you the halacha is that the 50% that the tam pays is only a knas, it's a fight. Why? Because we want people to watch their wild animals, even though you shouldn't be chayim. Says Gemara, you asked the bam kasha and then you tell me the halacha is the, the opposite of your bam kasha? In. Why? Time am I to say what was your bam kasha mishum deloy katani kamish kimoshi is it? Because it doesn't say like the amount of damage. 
The reason why it doesn't say that, says the Gemara, because it's not an absolute halacha. You can't say kemosh is it. There's something called tzreiris. Tzreiris means a rock that shoots out of the bottom of the animal. What's the difference? Because if the animal kicks something and breaks, let's say this is a jug. Here, animal kicks this, so it's with his physical body, he broke this. But if the animal is walking down the street and a stone flew out of his hoof and hit this, that's Sreiras. Now, he, he did something very normal. That's in the category of regal. He did something normal. It's normal to walk down the street. It's normal to step on stones. And he had zero kavana to break this clay. So for that, you pay half damages. And the Chesagimir law, the Mamaino. That's not a knas. You can't find somebody. You can't give a penalty for somebody's animal who walked down the street normally and a stone shot out of its. So obviously, the, that is the Allah of Mammon. That's pure money that he owes. And the Torah has Rahmanas on him because every time his animal is going to walk and, and break something, he's, he's going to go out of business. So therefore, the Torah said, pay 50. Not, that's not the reason, but I'm just saying, the Torah had Rahmanas on so you can't say an absolute halacha, because you have over here a case of chatzinezek, which is different than a tam, where he actually does pay because mamon and aknas. Says the Gemara of Ashdam is palganinsko knasa. Now that you're telling me that half of the nezek is considered a knas, that's what we said the halacha is. That's considered a knas. Hi kal b'da'achal imre. I'm still in safari mode. So here you have, this is not so much a dog. This is normal. This is a hyena. This is a chart seven. Hyena killing a wildebeest. Fine. That's normal. But for a dog to kill a sheep, that's not normal. Here's another picture. Here you have a leopard, which I did not, I wasn't zoichet to see in the safari, not the safari was zoichet, but I was zoichet to see an ostrich. For a cat to eat a very tiny, go a very large chicken, whatever that means, this is not it. This is not the picture. Stop, because I'm in safari mode. Since it's very different, Mishunu. So since it's different, you pay 50%. Anything is Mishunu, it's different, you pay 50%. In Chutzlar, it's in America. In Manchester, you don't collect. Why? Because we don't have the best and we don't have the smuchim that could collect us. Now, it says in Shulchan Aruch that Bizman even though we don't have a knas, but we put a person in Cherem until he pays or until he does good with his words. He's Mephais, the person with his words. Says the Gemara, Avazutre, but if it's a small chicken, oh, it is normal. That's already Shen. Eating with your mouth, rubbing, what's the classic case? Mishachich, the Kaisal Asai. He rubs, the, the, the axe rubs his back. I literally saw that today. It's all the time. I saw a wildebeest, which is like a shark, Rubbing his back on a on a tree, they they explain that it's to, to he puts his smell glands or something, puts his smell on the tree, but it's lahana so saw an elephant doing it on a tree, like just scratching himself. That's already shen, and that you have to pay the full amount. Vitovas. Now, since you're in Chutzlaretz and there's no bezdin, and somebody just went ahead and killed your ox, your ox is worth two thousand dollars. So if you go into the guy's house and you grab. You don't take away from him. He's allowed to grab. This is incredible. If you tell the guy that was mazik you, I want you to come with me to Eretz Yisrael, and we're going to go to Bezin Eretz Yisrael, because over there they have the right Bezin. He has to go to Eretz Yisrael. Can you imagine? To go from Iraq all the way to Eretz Yisrael, because you killed my ox. So what I saw they say is that it never happens. The guy is so scared that he has to go to Eretz Yisrael. It's going to cost him $10,000 to get there. And it's going to cost him three months of his life 
uh, trekking down from Iraq to Eretz on a donkey, that he'll just pay, he'll make up in Shalma Yisrael. Happens to be, there's a Shaila. Let's say you find uh, a cockroach in your soda can. So, well, great, you became a millionaire, you're going to sue Coca-Cola. The Shailas, if you like to do that in Eretz Yisrael, or maybe Dina the Mechus Dina, but because we don't have a Bezden, so you can't give Knossos. All Coca-Cola has to pay you is one can. But the rest, that restitution that you want for all the different things, that's already knas, and it's a, it's a shayla whether you're allowed to do it, if it's, it's Gnev or not. Says the Gemara, um, another interesting thing is that the Shulchan Aruch says that in Bavel, in other words, in Chutzlars, where we don't have a Bezin in America, if somebody dam- damages your axe, you can't go to Bezin and ask Bezin to tell you how much that axe is worth, to p- give you an appraisal on the axe, because they don't get involved. However, if you grabbed from that person, you ran into his house and you grabbed some silver instead of your axe, now you tell Bezin, but I need to know how much is the half damage, how much is the damage. And then they, they're forced, because if you hop, they don't take it away from you, so now you can force Bezdin to praise the damage. But that's only after you take. Tysus points out that the only thing that you're grabbing is from the, the, the damager, the, from the, you're not just grabbing silver. Tysus says you're grabbing the ox that caused the damage. That's the only thing that you're allowed to grab, according to Rabbi Nutan. We said already. And we said that. I want you to come to Bezin Israel. If he doesn't go, we put him in Khair. Regardless, we put the guy in Khair. Why? You gotta get rid of your hezek. There's a Gishmaka story with Reb Shmuel Rozovsky from Panovich. There was a Bacher in the dorm that was complaining to Reb Shmuel that his friend keeps on putting on his alarm, but never wakes up from the alarm. And it's, he's sick and tired of it. He keeps him up hour after hour. So Shmuel Rozovsky quoted this Gemara, Salkin and Azeko. You get rid of the hezek. But Rabbi Shmuel Rizovsky was horrified to learn that the Bachar went while the guy was sleeping. He's a very deep sleeper. Didn't hear his alarm. They, he lifted up the Bachar and put him out into the stairway. Rabbi Shmuel said, no, I meant the alarm clock, not the Bachar. Okay. Salak Yezekach. Says the Gemara, the Rabbi Nassan, the Sanyi Rabbi Nassan, Oymer, Minayin Shalei Gadol Adam Kelev Rabbi Sech Beisoy. How do you know? They you know to be megadol a kelev rab b'soich b'soi. Oh, what is going on here? How did that happen? Shenemar or a sulam ruua a rickety rackety ladder. You're not allowed to have blood in your house. You're not allowed to have a bad dog, a good dog. You're allowed to have. In other words, even if it's in a terrible neighborhood and you need it, like here in South Africa, a lot of people have dogs. If it's a bad one, it's also. But from here, you can be a diagra, boy. It says, you're not allowed to have a kelev ra, basically. The simple deal is, but if it's a Kelev Toiv, it's a nice, calm dog, then it's Mutter. There are those who are going to say, no, but every Kelev is Ra. No, no. The good news is that my son, Akiva, he came with us on this trip. He, we, we flew him in from California, and he's flying back to Israel with us, and he's going to take the Kelev that he, his Roshiva, told him he has to have a dog, and he's going to make him that. And then he ran away to America, to California, and left us with this gift. So Be'ezer Hashem, we worked on it very hard to get all the paperwork. Be'ezer Hashem, we're going to be so sad <laughs> to see that Kelev. He's not a Kelev Ra, but for me, he's Ra, Be'ezer Hashem. 
Adios. And with that, Hajun Aloch Elun Noorois, Hajun Aloch Elun Noorois, Hajun Aloch Elun Noorois, have a wonderful day.